Hello, and welcome back to the Book Marketing Tips and Author Success Podcast. Uh, this is Penny Sansevieri with my awesome co-host, Amy Cornell. I'm so excited about all the new reviews that we've gotten on the podcast. I don't know if you've checked it recently, but we've gotten a lot of, we're getting a lot of love and we love that. So as ever, wherever you listen to shows, we love a review, share the podcast with your writers group or social media or whoever you think that could benefit from um, our knowledge or rather Amy's knowledge because she always looks like the smarter one. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, Not true at all. We were number one under book marketing and author marketing on iTunes for several weeks. I think we were the number one show. So um, that was pretty exciting. And this particular episode, and I'm going to try not to get too far into the weeds. When we were in the green room, Amy and I were kind of going over some of the show notes. We're talking about distribution and I, you know, the word reimagining has been used to the point that I want to kind of slam my head against the wall, but this does tread into how distribution is being reimagined. And part of the reason why it was worth having or why it's worth doing an entire show on distribution is because it is so often misunderstood. So I talked to an author the other day and they were telling me that they have nationwide distribution. Right. And they purchased a program from somebody who was going to get them nationwide distribution. So the the I the misnomer for that I'm trying to find a really not I promised Amy that I wouldn't yell on the <laughs> show, even though this this irritates me to 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 no end. So distribution used to be that publishers would distribute your books, and by used to be, I mean like, I don't know, 20 years ago, so so a while ago, <clears throat> but they would distribute books that they acquired in most cases to bookstores nationwide, right? Bookstores started shrinking, you know, um, and distribution got a little less and less. So distribution, nationwide distribution was really for just the select few, the top tier kind of authors with publishers. But what most authors are referring to is um, digital distribution, right? So the author basic. so when I asked this author, I said, can you deep dive with me into what this actually is? And they mentioned that it was basically getting listed on Ingram, right? For, um, it was getting the book listed in the Ingram database, which is great. And it's super helpful, but it doesn't, it is not to be compared with the, uh, where a distribution actually, the origins of distribution, which is where books get pushed into bookstores or Target or Costco or Sam's Club or wherever. I mean, Amy, do we have had a lot of discussions around book availability and things like this? What do you kind of, where where do you sort of enter in under this discussion? Well, and that's, yeah, we definitely have this conversation with clients a lot too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm glad we're doing this show as well because I have not gone into the weeds with the actual, you know, the individual steps you have to take with distribution. But very much true to what you said. A lot of clients think that if they're in with Ingram, then everything's good. And that Ingram has a group of individuals just, just working their asses off, getting their books out there. And based on what you and I discussed, that's not the case, you know, getting, getting listed versus doing the actual legwork and the pitching and having those conversations with individual stores and retailers and things like that are apples and oranges. Absolutely. Digital distribution is important. So you want to have, you want to get your book into, you know, obviously Amazon, it would be considered a digital distribution, right? You want to, if you want to be able to have your book ordered by bookstores, and I realize as crazy as that sounds, it's not every author's goal, then, you know, Ingram is the largest wholesaler in the country. That's definitely where you want to get lists. You know, you definitely want to have a listing there. But distribution, that kind of digital distribution is pretty easy. I mean, you could do that on your own. You can 
um, you can go, and there are a lot of other companies like um, Smashwords, which is now part of draft to digital um, and I think there are a few other ones that have <clears throat> the ability to get you listed in databases, in Kobo, in Apple, et cetera, right? But it is not to be confused with, um, it's not to be confused with getting in bookstores across the country. The other piece of this too, and where the kind of the reimagining comes in is that distribution. So, you know, the old kind of way of distribution is still viable, but now, you know, to use an example, and this is something that Amy and I talked about in the green room too, is so it used to be that you had NBC, CBS, ABC, and they were putting out all the shows that we watched, right? And they were, and they pretty much kind of directed what got on television and all of that. But now you have Hulu, you have Apple TV, you have Netflix, you have all of these other, sh all of these other portals that are putting out content. And some of it, very, very good. So, and who, Amazon, I should mention Amazon Prime because I like, yeah, I want to throw Amazon under the bus about that. But I mean, a lot of these places are doing some really, really good content. So, you know, the distribution of television programming and radio programming with podcasts and Sirius XM and et cetera, has all been, it's it's been disrupted, right? So when you think about distribution of your book, Online distribution is great. Does not get you into bookstores nationwide. That's an important distinction. Also, and this is where, again, I just want to beat my head against the wall. It's not going to get you into books. It's not going to get you into airport stores. Can we have a conversation about airport stores? I mean, Amy. Right. I know. <laughs> Go ahead. No, when you mentioned airports, and this had nothing to do technically with the show, just my, my instinctual response is that I don't, no, if the last few times I've been through an airport, especially in the last five years that I've seen a book in an airport by an author who I didn't recognize. Yeah. So, exactly. And that's a pretty big deal. It's a big deal. And, you know, airport, there are companies that can get you into airport bookstores. I believe the last time I checked the cost to do that was about $30,000. And, and I want to just, say, I want to kind of interject here because we're not putting the show together to dash all your dreams. Although I realize some of our shows feel that way. It, it is, it's better for you to have this information so that you know, I mean, I just think the educated author makes better choices and for you to understand and know what distribution actually entails. So Online distribution, great. You can do that on your own. It's super, it's super easy. A lot of times people don't like to upload their books to book to portals and things like that. We've done it for clients. It's a very, very simple thing to do. But the other piece of distribution that I think is worth mentioning is the distribution. So specialty distribution, right? So there are still distributors that work with specialty retailers. I used to pitch to, or I have pitched to, the distributor who put books into Whole Foods, right? So big stores, obviously now Whole Foods is owned by Amazon. Oh my gosh, everything is owned by Amazon. Um, but specialty distributors and specialty bookstores, and you don't always necessarily have to have a distributor to do that. But there are like, for example, if you have written a book on um, specific, like I've, we've actually worked with a lot of books on trails and hiking, not just because I've recently become very addicted to hiking, but we've worked on a lot of those books and there are specialty retail distributors, excuse me, that distribute to retailers who are all about outdoor stuff. So there are, you know, nationwide distribution is really not a thing anymore. Nationwide online distribution is absolute, but there's a distinct difference between the two. Mm -hmm. I would say that, um, Amy, you have a lot of, because where you live versus where I'm at, you have a lot more, I think, create like smaller stores, fun mm -hmm. stores, creative stores. You see, you see books in those stores, right? All the time. Yeah. And these are small locally owned businesses. Right. So what I'm gleaning from your explanation so far, Penny, is that getting a listing in a database is just one component of it, you mm -hmm. know, because especially if it's book centric. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to get a book in somewhere that actually deals with books, it's kind of like 
your first ticket to entry, right? To be able to say, yes, my book is listed in this database, so it is available to you. But you still have to proactively go after those people. It's not a field of dreams sort of situation, right? Yeah, exactly. So these stores are just scrolling through like, oh, you know, they have nothing better to do than scroll and scroll and scroll. But these other specialty stores, like you're saying, is kind of a reverse engineered approach. You have to figure out who they work with, right? Right. And then from there, go and make those connections with whatever distributors that they, like you said, you don't always need to do that, but that might be part of the step too. Like these are always going to be multi-step processes. Right, exactly. And in some cases, I mean, look, if you really, and I I would not say no to a book deal that included having my updated edition of how to sell books by the truckload in every bookstore across the country. That's probably not going to happen first off because it's all about Amazon and bookstores hate Amazon, but, but also it's just, it's not really realistic. However, you know, start to, and it's not, this is not really about thinking smaller, but it's thinking create more creatively. And again, it's about reimagining what distribution was versus where it's going, you know, where it's going now. Depending on where you live, you have a lot of control over where, you know, you could walk into a, a, a retailer like Amy was talking about, some of the smaller, some of these smaller independently owned stores that have that do carry books. And even sometimes if they don't carry books, but books look like it would be a good addition to what they're um what they're offering their customers. And ask them, you know, would you, do you buy directly or do you go through a distributor and then you can pitch that distributor for, uh, for consideration. If you're pitching a distributor though, you've got to be prepared to show up with your A game. Mm -hmm. And we're talking because we used to do some pretty extensive pitching to distributors. So you have to have your marketing plan. You have to have a lot of, you know, you have to have um, your, you know, your book one sheet and, And by marketing plan, I mean, something that's pretty extensive. I mean, we would submit our marketing plan for the author, but then the author needed to also submit something, what they're doing on their own, because the distributors want to know. I mean, it's kind of like a book book being carried in a bookstore, right? The bookstore and the distributor, they all want to know that this book isn't just going to sit on the shelf and collect us. They want to know that this book is going to sell off the shelf, right? So... Mm -hmm. One of the, so that's one of the reasons why I say, and you know, the other thing though, too, is keep in mind that these retail, these smaller retails, e- retailers, even if they're independently owned, mom and pop, whatever, retailers know each other. So if you have, so Amy brought something to my attention, which is a whole different discussion, but it's kind of, it sort of ties in here. She brought something to my attention this morning that there's a book signing in a really cool local nursery to her. Uh, and it's a plant gardening book, et cetera, right? House plants, whatever, whatever it was, right? But this is now something that could be widely applicable to other nurseries in her area. So mm-hmm. let's say this guy comes in there and he does a really, he does a book signing and the, they decide to stock the book. And this nursery has relationships with other nurseries in the area. They always, you know, these smaller, especially some of these independent places, they always do. You never know where your book could get um, could get adopted into. So that's something to think about. I just, you know, I really just wanted to put the show together because I wanted to kind of, it's a cautionary tale. Be careful of somebody promising you nationwide distribution, ask them specifically. Yes. Ingram is a wholesaler. Technically they are digital distribution. There's a big difference between Um, there's a big difference between getting your book into bookstores, which so rarely happens anymore and getting your book just listed as it (laughs) said in some database where we're expecting people to scroll through the. Yeah. I think that's a really good point, Penny. There there's, there's getting your book listed and made available and going through the right process to make it easier for a retailer of any size to have your book in house is very different nowadays from the work that has to be done to actually make that connection, pitch that book, introduce it to the right people, things like that. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I'll tell you something, and I'll leave you with this one final little tidbit secret is most of your, even if you're, even if we're talking a Home Depot or a Starbucks or whatever, Hallmark, um, and I mentioned this only because we've done events, we've had book events specifically and some bookstore stocking and and many of those places, um, most of these retailers, their managers are allowed to make 
some decisions for, and I forget what they call it. It's like, you know, local doing local good, whatever, which is why like they can host scouting events or things like that. And they're allowed to do X number a year. And you could walk into a, a, you know, a big, I, I was talking to a couple who wrote a construction book for kids. And I suggested go into a Home Depot and see if they're willing to stock it. Home Depot has had kind of an odd relationship with books. They had books and they didn't have books, they didn't have books. But all they can say is no, they're not going to ask for your firstborn. Most of the time, you can handle a lot of your own local distribution. And again, these places talk to one another. So you never know where this could lead. So I hope that this has been helpful. I realize we got a little prescriptive. I hope I didn't get too far into the weeds on that. Distribution, online distribution, nationwide distribution, very, very different things. Your ears should perk up if somebody promises you um, nationwide distribution. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, And again, we love reviews wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.